Based on popular demand, I'm making a 3DFX video today. This is a Voodoo 2 that has some memory issues. The card is from a viewer and I have the card for quite some time now. And finally I thought it is time to have a look at it. The story behind this card is that it was in a regular PC, but then the power supply gave up. And then some of the memory chips exploded. And even though some of them look horrible, the 3DFX chips look to be in great condition. Maybe they have survived whatever happened to this card. And this will be what we will try to figure out. But first let's have a look over the card. I have noticed different types of damages on the memory chips. Some of the chips have a brown discoloration about in the center of the chip. This is probably right above the silicon die. And others have just cracked open. Those chips must have gotten extremely hot. And when there was too much goodness going into them, they exploded. This Voodoo card is a 12 megabyte model, so we have also 12 chips on the back of the board. And as you might have expected, there are also discolored, cracked open and exploded memory chips. Before I start any repair attempt, I really would like to know your guess if this Voodoo 2 can be repaired. I have no idea yet what will await us, but I can tell you that I measured the pins on the PCI connector and it seems like there is a short on the 5 volt rail. Otherwise, I have absolutely no idea what we will find today. So let me know in the comments if you think that this Voodoo 2 will render 3DFX glide games again or not. Maybe I should mention that I am allowed to replace the memory chips because I do have spare ones, but I do not have spare 3DFX chips. So in case one of our 3DFX chips here is faulty, I would have to declare this project a failure until I find a donor card where I could take off a TMU or an FBI chip. But enough of this now, let's jump into the repair. So hopefully my setup is complete. This is the first time I'm using multiple cameras. What you are seeing right now, this is a webcam on the side, which has a nice overview of the card. Hopefully it's clear enough. Later when I remove the memory chips or probe around with a multimeter, that's a better view than through the microscope. But I will also be able to seamlessly switch, hopefully, between this view and the microscope. Let's see. Yes, so this is the microscope and I can increase the brightness a little bit. Great, this all seems to work. Now we go through the microscope in a moment, but first I want to probe around the connector of the Voodoo card because there is a short on the 5 volt rail, I measured this before, uh, but I just want to show you. So we have a PCI connector. The third pin on this card, beeps already, is ground. I was expecting this. The diamond card doesn't have all the pins on this connector. They saved some money with this. So you can see this card here has all the connectors or all the pins on the connector. <laughs> This one doesn't, there are some gaps in between. Nevertheless, the third pin is ground. Uh, let me turn down the light a little bit so you see better. And then we have the five volt rail here at the end. These are the last two pins on the card. And they should not have continuity to ground, but they do. So this is only on the diamond card. If I look at the second card that I have here, they, there's one of the TMUs missing. No connectivity. So this is what we would expect. So definitely there is a short on this card and most likely it is because of the memory chips that exploded. It would be amazing if all it needed would be a few new memory chips, but we will see, I guess. The memory chips look really bad. The 3DFX chips or any other chip look okay, so maybe there is a chance. I guess the first thing we need to do is to figure out why we have the short on the 5 volt rail and I'm assuming once we remove the memory chips we will be able to remove the short, but I don't know. So now let's go and have a look through the microscope. Now I need to increase the brightness a little bit. So this is the front side where the 3DFX chips are located as well. And here is, uh, you see already the black stuff, uh, magic smoke came out of this memory chip. 
And here is one of them. Wow. This is... It literally cracked open. Let's just see if we can maybe... Oh yeah, so see, this is loose. Wow. This is... This is no longer... Oh. Okay. This is completely toasted. Let's see here. There's a crack here as well. Okay. Can we look into it? It's still... Wow. This one must have gotten extremely hot. I'm trying to... Oh! Yes, 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 yes. Oh my goodness. What's in here? This is all wires, I guess. But maybe there was somewhere the the silicon die. Maybe somewhere here in the center, I guess. But somehow it it exploded from here. That looks horrible. So this looks like it's all metal. Oh. This melted. This looks like melted... What is this? Copper or something? So this is... Uh, some traces still. So let's see if we can crack that chip further open. Okay, I think. Ah, uh, okay. Here's the silicon die. I can see small glass pieces. Is this a die? This looks like the die. See? We have a die shot. Oh, this is so cool. This was absolutely not planned for this video. Uh, now I think the video gets like 10 minutes longer just because I'm playing around with this. <sighs> so now I just want to clean it a little bit. Maybe we can see a little bit more of the dye. Look at that. So cool. So... Yeah, this is uh, not expected, to be honest, that these structures are so visible in my... Uh, yeah, not not very uh, high spec microscope. So there was one chip on the front. This is this one here. This is where we saw the die nicely exposed now. And the other one on the back, which is this chip here with a hole. But there are more problems. There are other chips that also cracked open, but it wasn't enough to melt or blow this hole into the housing. So this one just looks like it got hot here. But it's also again on that same spot. So this one here looks okay from the color perspective, but it has a crack all around here. You see this here. So this definitely needs to go. This chip probably is dead. Now that because I don't see any discoloration on this chip, now I'm worried that all the other chips may actually be dead as well. So I'll power on my hot air station and I will go ahead and remove those chips that we have seen and see what happens to our short on the, on the connector that we have measured before. So before we go and remove the memory chip, I want to show you something that I have noticed right now. These pads have lifted from the PCB. I have to be very careful. I think here you see this pad here is completely lifted. This pad has completely lifted from the PCB. So I have to be super careful and most likely if there is no major damage, I have to reattach these pads to the PCB to make sure that they provide a proper support for the new memory chips that go on. But now let's go back and uh, use the hot air station to remove some of the chips. So I have my Aten hot air station here. I think 300 degrees should be good enough. I'm not using any flux this time. Let's see.
And it's at 300 degrees. This hot air station is amazing. So let's be very careful. Let's first heat up the PCB a little bit. Okay, one side is loose. Now the problematic side. We have a problem here. It doesn't want to go. It doesn't want to go. I think there's maybe one or two of the pins. I don't want to keep it too long as well. It may deform the PCB. So let's see. Sorry, I don't trust this one. Let's see what happens under the microscope. Okay, I think this is going to be a much bigger problem to solve. Okay, so there's just one of the... I'm not going to use hot air anymore for this one. I'll just clip it off. Doesn't make any sense to torture this board any further. It's just one of the pads. So what do we have here? Look at this memory chip on the bottom. This one just melted and probably destroyed some of the PCB here. So there are definitely pads missing. They completely disappeared. Maybe this will be the end of it. Who knows? Okay, here is our broken memory chip. This is the underside. And here is the exposed die. Yeah, that chip just melted through and through and damaged the PCB a little bit. I cleaned it up now. So what's the damage? We are missing three pads. Unfortunately, one of them fell off while I tried to remove all the black stuff that discolored the PCB. So maybe I can reattach this. I mean, it's nicer to have a proper pad in here than just a wire. Here, I think there is nothing that is concerning. This is just the PCB itself. There is no problem, hopefully, with the wire. This one here, for instance, this one here looks okay. I will still refill this exposed, I think it's fiberglass. I'll put some new solder mask on top of it. And otherwise, I think we were quite lucky with this board as it looks like. So if I'm not mistaken, this was the worst, this was the worst memory chip that exploded on this Voodoo card. So maybe there is hope after all. Only unfortunate part was that the the pins on the memory chip somehow probably fused with the with the pads on the PCB and that is why they were ripped off. Or maybe I was just not careful enough, but they didn't 
seemed like they wanted to let go from the memory chip. Anyway, I have fixed some of those pads before, so this shouldn't be too big of an issue. And now let's just uh, maybe have a look if our short is still there or if it's gone. One goes to ground and ground is still there and yeah, it's still short. Still short. Okay, let's continue. Next I will remove this one chip that we have seen here on the top. It's uh, this one here. This also is cracked open. So let's remove this one. Okay, so let's test one more time. Short is still there. Let's continue with the chips on the back. Let's check our other exploded chip, which is this one here in the corner. I hope this one is not melted through and we have the same issue like with the previous chip. Let's see, maybe it didn't go all the way through to the other side. It did go through, but not enough to mess up everything. That's good. I still have to clean it, but it looks much better. Oh. Maybe show you in the microscope when I'm cleaning things. Okay, what is the next chip? I wanna double check. Let's double check quickly what happened to our short. On the side. Still there. I wonder if we'll be able to fix this one. So we have two more chips that have visible damage. Next one is this chip. Okay. Let's... Okay, I have another problem now. There are some uh, pins being bridged. So before the board gets too cold, let me just remove this other chip. This one was the one that was cracked. This is the top right one. And then we clean the pads because there are some bridges and that could cause that our short is still there. All the memory chips with the cracked housing have to go off anyway. Now we'll jump under the microscope again and uh, clean up our pads a little bit. Let's see if the short is still there. Yep, short is still there. So we have to continue removing memory chips. I wouldn't be surprised if you remove all of them and there would still be a short on the five volt rail. That would make things a lot more difficult. So I guess I continue removing memory chips. Let 
Let's see if something changed. I just want to remove one solder bridge. And here's a solder bridge also removed. Okay. Do we still have a short? Still shorted. It's still shorted. Okay. Let's continue. Back side. Short is still there. Okay, moment of truth. I have four more chips, but chances are getting lower and lower that it's our memory chips. Still shorted. Five watts is still shorted. Let's remove the remaining four memory chips. Let me definitely know it's not the memory chips. But that increases the likelihood of our 3DFX chips to be damaged. And if that's the case, then we have a problem. Where did I put my tweezers? Okay, all memory chips are off. Let's see if we have some bridges. Okay, so let's see. <gasps> no, <laughs> the short is gone. I can't believe it. <laughs> The short is gone. The short is gone. It was one of the memory chips. <laughs> I would not have expected this. Okay, so um, I will go ahead and clean all these pads because I just removed 24 memory chips. They have to go back, not these memory chips, because I don't trust any of them, other memory chips. So yeah, uh, that's interesting. Cliffhanger maybe. Let's see, I don't know yet. Okay. So this will really be a two-part video because I have so many things to do and uh, it is cloudy in Dubai today. So even if I would go ahead and fix the pads on the PCB of the Voodoo card, I will not be able to put it outside for proper curing. So I think this would be something for a future video, which also will come this week, hopefully. All the memory chips are off the Voodoo card now. As you can see, I already cleaned up all the other pads. There were no other issues. The only problem is here in this corner where the memory chip just melted part of the PCB and some of the pads were ripped off when I tried to remove the memory chip. And on the other side, there was also an exploded chip. I think it was here in the corner, this one here. So luckily nothing happened to the PCB here, but everything is nice and clean. But I still want to do something for this video. 
It was interesting that I had to remove all memory chips from the Voodoo card to get rid of our short. So I was thinking that these are 5 volt memory chips, so these ones must have shorted out the 5 volt rail. And if you look at the datasheet, you will see that opposite edge pins are one is 5 volt, the other one is ground, and so is the other side. So we should easily be able to just measure between those two pins and we'll see what kind of resistance we get. But to know if a chip is good or bad, we need some kind of a baseline. So as I said before, I don't trust any of these memory chips. Um, these ones, I think the company is Mosel, if I'm not mistaken. This is uh, just a manufacturer of those memory chips. And I happen to have other memory chips from the same company. They are just rated for a different speed. These ones were originally purchased for the original Voodoo card. And I still have a few spares. I also, one time, I thought I need um, spare memory chips for Voodoo 2 cards, and I bought a full roll of memory chips. So these ones should be probably, I, I don't know, maybe 100 pieces. They are not from Mosel, they are from Elite MT, I think. So here's the beginning of this big roll of memory chips, and uh, I will just get one of these memory chips out and compare it to the other memory chips that I just showed you to make sure that there is not a big difference. I'm expecting those chips to measure almost identical values on ground versus uh, power. And then we go ahead and measure all memory chips that I took off the Voodoo card. Okay, so I took three of the known good chips for the Voodoo 1 and one of the new batch. This is the Elite MT memory chip. And if we look at the marking on the housing, the Voodoo 1 memory chips are identical except for the speed rating. So we have V53C16258 HK. And the only difference is the access time or the speed rating of 35 versus 25. Otherwise, those chips are identical, so I'm expecting that the resistance between power and ground pin should be very similar. Okay, so let's try to measure these memory chips now. This is the first known good Voodoo 1. And we have around 1.3 mega ohms on one side, and this is the same pins on the other side are identical. And we also get 1.3. So this is the second chip. 1.06 mega ohms, also in the mega ohms. And here, 1.5 mega, 1.05 mega ohms. So it looks like there should be at least one mega ohm. Everything else that may be lower may be an issue. Okay, so here we are close to one mega ohm or 970 kilo ohms. That's still a very high resistance. And the other side, 955 kilo ohms. These ones all measure in the mega ohm range. So now let's check the Elite MT chip, which goes on the Voodoo card later on. Or should, let's see. 1.4 mega ohms. So one mega ohm or more looks like is the target value that we should try to get. Everything lower, definitely like in the ohm range or kilo ohm lower kilo ohm range, is most likely not a working memory chip anymore. And think about it, the lower the resistance between the power pin and the ground pin, the more current is going to flow and therefore most likely the chip will get hotter. You can use Ohm's law to calculate how much current is flowing if you're in the mega ohm range, but it will be very, very minimal. Let's start with our physically damaged chips. So, first one. ninety five ohms, so this one is already out. I don't even want to measure the other side. next one three mega ohms, okay, this one other side one point one kilo ohms, so one thousand ohms approximately. yeah, this is out. so which one is this is the one with a cracked housing only it <laughs> looks not. Not too bad, so you could easily overlook that, but still 
resistance is way too low. This is the one that I showed you the die before. 1.3 kilo ohms. Okay. Also out. This one is one that started a little bit melting, didn't really burn a hole into it, but still visible damage on the housing. Yeah, 35 ohms. So this one definitely could have caused or contributed to our short on the Voodoo card. So let's now look at the other I think, what do I still have? Another 20 memory chips, I think. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yes, there are 20 memory chips left. These ones do not look like they are damaged. So let's go one by one. So first one, 6.5 kilo ohms out. Next one, 1 mega ohm, okay. This is what we have seen on the other memory chips. And on this side. One mega ohm. <laughs> this chip may have survived. Okay, so let's put them somewhere else. The survivors. Let's try the next one. Oh, 66 ohms. Um, I will calculate the current that flows through this chip at 66 ohms with a 5 volt power supply. So next one. 550 ohms. Also way too low. No, I don't even want to measure the other side. Gone. 660 ohms. Also gone. Let's just check the other side. Do we get a different measurement. No, it's the same. Next one. 300 ohms. We should get mega ohms, so we're not even in the kilo ohm range. So here you see, so one side has 6.9 kilo ohms, so 6,900 ohms. The other side just gets to 310 ohms. So both sides are not necessarily connected to each other. So also gone. What do we have here? 760 ohms, gone. Next one. 1.1 mega ohms. Okay, do we have another survivor? 1.1, yes, maybe we have another survivor. 32 ohms, that's the worst one for now. There's nothing on this chip that looks perfectly fine, but at 32 ohms, you will have the current on the screen flowing through this chip. 190 ohms, out. Next one, 12 kilo ohms, not bad, but yeah, and here you have 190 ohms. No, nope. out. Wow, so many memory chips that just didn't make it. They all died. Three, what? 33 ohms, 34. <laughs> also, no, out. Next one. Uh-oh. 28, out, 1.2 kilo ohms, 1,200 ohms, out. Hey, one mega ohm, okay. One mega ohm, we have another survivor. Now I think I'm at three, okay, three. 2.7 kilo ohms, 2,700 ohms. And this side. Twenty ohms. Out. We're down to three chips. Oh! 1.1 mega ohms. And this side. 
1.1, another survivor. So now we're at four. Now I'm thinking maybe I should add memory sockets to that voodoo card and maybe try those memory chips, you know, swap them out and easily be able to remove them if I don't want to have them on the card. What do you think? Let me know in the comments if you want to test those memory chips that we are saving. 122 ohms, yeah, out. What's on the other side? 5 kilo ohms, okay, still out. And then we have the last chip, 546 ohms on the other side. One hundred ninety ohms, so also out. So all of these chips, even though they look fine from the outside, seem to have lower than expected resistance between ground and the five volt pin, which probably means, I guess, something internally has melted, has connected that shouldn't be connecting. Yeah, so. That is the result of a bad power supply that has taken this Voodoo 2, for now, to the dead cards of Voodoo cards. And now we'll try to fix it. But for now, this is enough for this video. Um, let me know what you think about it. Did you expect that by removing all memory chips, the short disappeared? Because I literally lost hope at some point because I really thought, okay, that's it. Maybe the memory chips are not the problem. Maybe it is one of the 3DFX chips. But we have really good chances that this Voodoo 2 is going to work. So I will continue now to work on this Voodoo card and I will try to get another video out this week. So you will get two videos. Yeah, sorry, I just too much. And I want to share with you a little bit more details in my videos from now on. And I hope you're curious how this project turns out. So again, thanks for your time. Thanks to all my Patreons for their support. And uh, let me know your thoughts, comments, recommendations, whatsoever in the comments. Thank you so much and bye bye.